First, uh, we were looking at issues of the environment and the implications generally on what we call the Mother Earth. When we mention Mother Earth, it refers to the biodiversity, the planet, and the health of it generally. And uh, generally, there has been a concern around the issues of climate change. And the United Nations has uh, been talking about this and uh, raising uh, different standards as to and galvanizing uh, countries of the world to be more proactive in protecting the, the, the planet against uh, pollution and waste and protecting biodiversity. That will be part of what we'll be talking about in the next couple of minutes. I have with me in the studio an environmentalist, uh, John Ekoko. It's nice to have you join me. Thank you, Mike. Good morning. Quite some time. Great. Now, uh, the, when we talk about uh, this, the, the health of Mother Earth, as, as it is, uh, generally we've been talking about the issue of climate change and how uh, what it poses and the consequences of it based on human activity and all of that. Uh, from, from your analysis, the issue of awareness has been created more than it used to be. But how are you viewing the response to what we all need to do as a people? Thank you very much, Mike. Um, good morning, Lagos. Good morning, Nigeria. I want to thank TVC for being at the forefront of environmental enlightenment. Thank you. Mother Earth Day came about because of concern at the rate of degradation of the planet. Mm. The first one held in 1970, it was like within 10 years, the Earth itself will be wiped off by human activities that tamper with nature. That's what we call the anthropogenic activities. Mm. So it was like, let us call attention to our actions if we're going to save this planet. Mm. Because we do not have another planet. This is the only one that sustains life. Now you ask a good question. What is the impact upon us? The first thing I want to look at are the consequences of not being mindful of the earth. And the strongest one in Nigeria today is this farmers herders conflict. Mm. It has taken a turn. So, so there's an environmental consequence to that. It is purely environmental. There is no water in the north for the cattle. They have to come to the south. Right? Mm -hmm. Now the question is, in the south, do we have enough space to accommodate ourselves and the cattle rearers? We don't have. Okay, let us sit down and negotiate. Somebody is not patient enough. So what do we see? Agatu, Oyo, Ogun, Benue. I don't know that you get my point. Oh, they tried, there was a grazing route in 1937. What are we talking about? The situations in 1937 and 2020, they are not the same. Not the same. What is the main thing? Because the certification is coming down south at a very rapid rate. Sadly, too, um, erosion mm. and uh, flooding is also advancing very rapidly from the south. We're all converging around the middle belt. If that is not environment, what is it? The next one I've always talked about when I came is our own hygiene. The way we dump waste, we flood, we, 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 we clog all the drains. Water cannot flow. Look at the way it has caused avoidable flood. But when it comes to the issue of uh, dirts and all pet bottles and all of those and cans clogging the or people throwing them into uh, drainages, uh, people have also argued that if drainages are made, since we know the terrain and we know how it is, why not cover them up when construction is being done? Because when, when they are open, uh, people, of course, will be prone to things being thrown into it. Correct. But every action has a consequence. Mm. If the drain is not covered, is it a permit to go and dump? Mm, certainly not. It is not. Mm. 
Secondly, when you dump the waste in the drain, what is the consequence of it? It gets blocked. Then, when it gets blocked, water does not have a channel mm. to flow through. So what does it do? Mm. Spreads everywhere. Spreads into the you roads know? and the homes. Now, at the end of the day, people have died, a lot have been displaced, but it seems as if habits have so thickened that they find it difficult to change. Something worse than that is when people now build mm. on journey channels. Oh my God. You know? Well, the idea is not to come here and moan. I will tell you, and I'm glad to say it, the Nigerian Environmental Society is doing something. They have come up with the concept of environmental marshals. These are like the environmental policemen. Mm. Not by use of force, but by use of engagement, enlightenment, and awareness. They want to engage with local communities. They want to engage with traditional rulers. They want to engage with agencies of government responsible for the environment. But when, when, when we leave that issue to, to suasion or moral suasion or persuasion as the case may be, we have not really often seen uh, effectiveness in that regard. And a lot of people have called for some level of enforcement and firmness. How do we balance that? Thank you, sir. Now, I can tell you, hmm. after some time, it will go on to maybe there's monitoring mm. because it's part of the concept. You cannot put an idea down without monitoring mm. it to see whether it's working or not. As long as we have brought the communities, the leaders, the youth, and the government together, it will become obvious at a stage that there must be laws, there must be sanctions, there must be penalties. We're going to get there. One of the things we are trying to do first is to get the bill passed to recognize the environmental society as an institution. Just as you have ICANN, you have engineers, mm -hmm. you have doctors, because there's nobody really in charge. We still exist more as an NGO today. Whereas what we need is a charter from the government. I'm glad to say we've passed the second reading. We are going on to the third and final reading mm -hmm. and passage. Once that is done, then of course we are armed legally with the power to go further. But this engagement of the government, of the communities, of the uh, traditional you know, leaders mm. is going to actually start the process. And I want to say, even in our own families, let's start from there, there are basic practices. Number one, have a place to drop your waste. Very simple. Number two, speak up. When you see somebody committing mm. an act or a practice that's against the environment, right? And if you stretch it a bit more, the topic this year is restore our art. Mm -hmm. It's not restore the art, restore our art. Let us take ownership. Mm. The point remains that you see, there are natural processes. Yeah. Let us even understand them and sufficiently create awareness. Number two, there are emerging technologies. Things today are much easier than a few yeah, years than, back. Than it used to be, of course. Yes. And number three, there's innovative thinking. What innovation has done? Oh my God, you won't believe it. In Ivory Coast, somebody got there saw that the shoreline was awash with plastic bottles. Mm. You know what he did? He went round, gathered as much as possible, and used it to build an hotel mm. on the water. Would you believe it? A floating hotel. Floating hotel. Mm. Oh, I saw that video sometime. That is uh, ecotourism mm. for... Amazing. Ivory Coast today. Mm. People from all over the world. A trip, $100. Mm. And the man makes a hell of money. He's, he has built a swimming pool on top of the mm. ocean using what? Still floating. And he so, has mm. gathered together the community youth. In fact, you won't see plastic bottles there again. Amazing. Right? In Nigeria, there are people today 
who take uh, plastic waste to build fabric. Mm -hmm. So much is going on. I've always talked about the um, Makoko area. You know? In fact, in a few years' time, there will not be waste. Because it is supposed to be a cyclical thing. Okay. It is a waste because you don't know what to do with it. Mm. People every day are working on implementing, you know, use values for what we regard as waste. So are, are, we, are we hoping to cash in on a bandwagon effect? Because when, when you talked about, in fact, the video you're talking about, I saw a, a viral video of, uh, of the floating, you know, hotel you're talking about. It was really amazing. Fantastic. Really amazing. Fantastic. Fantastic. I love it so much. <laughs> and like you said, Nigerians, a lot of Nigerians, uh, you know, young Nigerians are involved in, you know, uh, recycling pet bottles and using them for different things and yeah. all of that. So are, are you looking forward to seeing a bandwagon effect where people see uh, some level of uh, uh, you know, lucrative business in, in this and then cashing in on it? Very soon. Hmm. Very, very soon. It has started. Right. What we need is a critical mass. Hmm. What I want to call the capacity to turn it into a business. People look at waste now with different ideas. Hmm. Number one is that you find out that um, they will tell you instead of using uh, plastic, use paper, use biodegradable, mm -hmm. you know, that one is mm -hmm. going on there. Secondly, is you have uh, this uh, eco-friendly stove mm -hmm. that reduces the amount of wood that you consume. And right? that's used in parts of the north. Exactly. Especially where there are no firewoods. Exactly. Mm. One fantastic one I saw recently was biodegradable farming. Wow. How, how does that work? Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> it's happening in the north. Hmm. Right? Um, so part of West Africa, it is not common in Nigeria yet, hmm. where you take all these paper products, you make them into a can. Okay. Then you dig the ground, you put the can in the ground. Right? You put water. It holds water, you know, longer. Hmm. Right? Hmm. So the, the seed is a field of water for a longer period. And within that period of planting, the material also degrades, providing more food. Yeah. The rate of survival of the seeds has improved by 85%. Wow. Biodegradable. And wow. all the desert areas are becoming green areas again. You see, the issue is the possibilities are endless. Hmm. All we need to do is just sit down. All right. Yeah. Uh, as we round off, how, how, how should today be commemorated? The, the, world, the, the, Earth, the world Earth Day. How best can we commemorate? Just in one minute before we leave. Thank you. The World Earth Day. Um, like I said, my society, the Nigerian Environmental Society, mm. is actually taking a front row. We are engaging the institutions... We are, we are in 27 states okay. in Nigeria. We are telling our chapters in all the states to actually mention the challenges mm. in each of the areas. Peculiar challenges. The steps they've taken to engage the communities, the leaders, and the government, mm. state it. Then also, do what? Mention the monitoring steps okay. that you have put in place to ensure that whatever recommendations or suggestions come up mm. is being implemented. All right, so it's like collating data for action. Yes. All right. Yes. We have to leave you here now. Thank you so much, John Ekoko, for coming on the program. Thank you, Mike. We wish I'm you grateful. well. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Right.